course, you recorded the first part of it. Everything looks good. Looks good. <laughs> looks good. Very good. All right. It's only three seconds. Yeah. Oh no, it's on. It's We're scary. going. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the the live stream with Robert and Brandon Rio. In the background. In the background. So, what I wanted to do, you son of a. There we go. What I wanted to do for this live stream is just kind of finish off where we left off the uh, last two weeks. Uh, we started on Frankenstein. And uh, I think I'm going to finish it live. But I think it's best I break it down instead of making like a five-hour live stream, which would be exhausting to watch. And at the end, when I'm finished with all of it, I don't know if I'm going to do like the bass and all that live. That's kind of boring. Um, painting rocks and fabric. So I think I might do that uh, like off camera. And then um, I might be doing a, a giveaway. It might, like, I will uh, once I'm done with all of this. Uh, I'm probably going to give it away. I am going to give it away. So <laughs> then already. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> so once I'm finished with this guy, yeah, I'll be, I'll be putting up a giveaway. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, you know, probably like how everybody does a giveaway, you know. Like the pose, comment, reshare it. Same old, same old shit. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to start by finishing it off. It's very simple, I guess. It's probably going to take me, like, two hours this live stream to do it. Um, just because we're getting into, like, the little, the little nitty-gritty stuff. But since, like, the last live stream, I kind of rushed the hair, which... I wasn't supposed to do. I was supposed to finish off the face and then put the hair on last, but I wanted you guys to see at least some of it before we ended off the live stream. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go back and redo some areas uh, and put in those little extra details that I kind of just skim past for the sake of time. Now we have time, so. <laughs> You know, by all means, ask some questions in the comments. I swear to God, if you guys don't ask questions, we're not going to have anything to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> the live stream will just be two hours of silence. This is going to be two hours of hearing the airbrush go off. No, I don't Oh, by the way, um, I think starting this week, we're starting next week, I, I would say, uh, I'm probably going to be doing a live stream every Friday. Uh, I'm going to, I'm kind of like caught up in work at the moment, and I don't really have that much time to be making and editing, editing videos and having one every week like I said I was going to, and uh, I don't want to lose that consistency, so... You know, I enjoy doing these live streams, and they're kind of fun. So, you know, at the end of it, of the week, you know, Friday nights, I'm just going to be doing like a one to two hour, maybe three, depending on how I'm feeling. Of just something. It's not just going to always be painting. It might be other stuff. There's a future project I kind of have in mind I want to work on. Uh, painting just like a, a blank figure that I'm looking into buying off eBay. Um, 
I did one already. It's a, if you guys don't know, on my story I posted about it. I did like a little Shin Godzilla. And I enjoyed it so much that I kind of want to do a video of it. But obviously it's too late. I already painted the figure, which is great because I needed time to really focus. Uh, but I'm looking into maybe buying a blank one, which they do sell blank versions, like clear castings, and repainting an entire new one and recording that whole thing, or doing it on live stream. It took me a few hours, so it might not just be one live stream, or I might just record it once and then speed it up and post it as an actual video. But. Uh, Blanks are on eBay for like $200. If you guys want to buy one. Or if you want to buy one and send it to me to pay to paint, by all means. I'll probably wait till after you see the one he just did before you commit to that. Yeah. Not that it's bad, but just for your own it's terrible. peace of mind. You guys want to see it? I'll show it before I commit to start I don't usually show clients work, but this was so fun to do. And I loved it. I loved doing it so much. I repainted the whole thing. It was a lot of fun. I like doing the end too, making it a lot more richer and shinier. It's a lot more like saturated. Yeah. yeah. But this was a real fun piece to do. So I want to do, I want to buy like a fully blank one. Because this one was originally painted, but I had to strip it down with acetone uh, in order to start from scratch. So, but if I buy like a blank one, like that would be, that would just be a real sick video. Here's the other little head. Mm. But yeah. So that's a new video idea I kind of want to work towards making down the line at some point. Um, I'm also still trying to finish that Godzilla sculpture. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you see the stuff I work on. I've been working for the past couple months on a Godzilla sculpture and it's just, it's been kind of tough. Just kind of going back and forth, trying to figure it out. Uh, because I'm trying to make it like my own and that's kind of hard when it comes to Godzilla because he's so, he's so already iconically unique and making your own could be very tragic or it could be, you know, something something interesting. And so far it's just been tragic. But uh, I think like I'm on a a good path to finishing him. The only difference is uh, like I was kind of like caught between creating it in almost like an abstract form and then creating it in like a hyper realistic form. Or not hyper realistic, because obviously it's not at all you know a realistic character that you can kind of like base it off of. Um, but I'm modeling mine more off of like dragon scales and alligator hide, so it kind of has like that resemblance to it, which makes it a little bit more like realistic, like modern, I guess. Um, but I have a video in the works for that one, like one of those. Um, cinematic videos that I've been doing like have like if you've seen the scavenger it's another video like that which I'm looking forward to releasing at some point but it definitely does need to get like I don't need to finish it completely in order to post the video um, but at least make it look presentable for camera because I don't want the final shot to be a, a somewhat hideous looking unrecognizable thing like this is this is where I'm at right now.
And I'm showing all of this before I start painting because once the paint goes in the airbrush and it dries out, it's just gonna be a big mess cleaning out. But like, that's the roughness of it right now. That's just me like, like this, I've never sculpted, I've never ever really sculpted scales before. I've definitely done like a little Godzilla head, but you can't compare that to like this size. Like the Godzilla head's like this big as to this thing, which is like full scale. So like here you can see I'm just kind of like messing with direction patterning. It's very sloppy and it's very just kind of like, it's, it's a canvas. And then here on the other side, it's a lot more refined as far as like where I'm headed with scales. So I'm heading more in this direction, but like even this took me quite a bit of time. And then on top of that, you know, I have the other side and on top of that, I have, if you could see in the back room, this entire thing that has to have this level of detail in the scale patterns, which this isn't even done. Uh, this, each individual scale is going to need some slight texture to it uh, to look, to make it, you know, Otherwise, it's just gonna look like a bunch of little gravel pieces stuck on him. So I need to give it that that look and that cracking of like actual like reptile scales. But yeah, that's where I'm at with those projects. Um, that's why this live stream I just decided to kind of paint. I would 100% paint the or sculpt the Godzilla live, but. It takes me so long just to do one little portion of it. I don't think it would be worth showing the, like three hours worth of process when I'm not really going to get far. So maybe when I'm a little farther down the line and I can just kind of chat and not really focus too much on the sculpture, but just kind of, it'd mostly be kind of like a show and tell or some, something like that. But uh, okay, so what, what I'm doing right now is I've mixed up a blend of uh, the first color I applied and the secondary color I applied uh, to give it uh, like a stronger bond. Like it's gonna like seal everything. It's just gonna make it look more uniform. Um, Cause right now he he looks kind of pale, so I need to I need to saturate him a little bit more. So I'm gonna lightly go around the whole thing and add this. There goes my water. This. Hey, our boy. So. Has the chat. Yeah. <laughs> You've been quiet this wrong. whole time. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, we like pity compliments because we know it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, like I said, like before, uh, I'm definitely gonna be doing this every every Friday. Um, I enjoy it a lot because I get to work um, with an audience, which to some degree it can be distracting, but not really. As long as I keep my eyes focused on what I'm doing, um, this is actually very enjoyable for me. But, uh, yeah, it's not, I'm not just going to be doing Frankenstein for the next couple weeks. I'm definitely going to be switching back and forth on other, uh, other projects. I might even do the Raptor project live. Uh, I definitely want to start on that one, but like I said, I've been kind of booked with other things. And it's kind of hard to start on a wet clay project because you have such a limited amount of time to work on it before it really, like, dries out. And then it can start cracking, and then it's kind of pointless. So, I mean, you can preserve the clay, definitely, with, like, a trash bag and uh, give it a couple sprays um, every day to help keep it moisturized, keep the clay moisturized so it doesn't dry out. But I definitely want to have at least, like, three weeks free where I can just hammer the project consistently and try to knock it out within like a month. But yeah, I'll definitely, I'm definitely looking into trying to uh, 
do a live stream of that project when it happens. But next week, to be honest, I'm probably going to sculpt Godzilla again. I've been hacking away at him, you know, a couple hours a day. So, doing it next Friday night might be, might be fun. So the paints I'm using to go over this are translucents, and I'm using translucents because they they help add uh, skin layers. Like, like um, obviously, like your skin isn't like a solid color. Like, it has layers. It has like the the dry skin layer, which um, you have. Like, I don't know how to really explain it, but. Um, your skin has layers, pretty much. And trying to paint this all uniform is gonna make it obviously look cheap and unauthentic. It'll start looking like an action figure. So I'm using translucents to kind of layer it up little by little. Um, and as you can see, like when I first started painting it, the veins, like see on this side where I've worked less on it, the veins are very noticeable. <coughs> but the more I go over with layers of translucent paint uh, it starts hiding it and it starts looking like it's embedded into the sculpt rather than painted on Yeah, like I said, this is probably going to be a very silent <laughs> live stream. Um, one, because I'm kind of a little bit more focused now on trying to get this done. And uh, Brandon's also working in the back on a future project. Um, which is the, the Vader project I mentioned a while back. It's, it's so far behind in the project that I can't even make a video of it. Uh, I purchased like a quote-unquote original casting off eBay of the actual Vader helmet. And I say quote-unquote because like you never, yeah, you're, you're never 100% sure. Uh, it's authentic enough where, you know, I spent the money, I invested the money on it. It was, you know, there was side-by-side -side images of it, of you know, the screen use one and their so-called casting of an original one. So what I'm doing, well, number one thing, if it's an original one, it's really rough. And um, as expected, I mean, that movie had a low budget with practical effects, even though some of them were really amazing. Um, so the helmet is, isn't at all smooth. So I have to go in and pretty much body shop the entire helmet, resand it, <coughs> wet sand it, so it's at a nice smooth finish, so I can add like the automotive paint, um, or the primer and the automotive paint. But um, before that, it actually has this terrible cheap primer that they sprayed all over it for some reason, 
and I th and I assume 100 percent. Well, I don't assume. I, I believe 100 percent. It was it was used to cover up any imperfections in the first layer of tinted resin because uh, it has a a first layer of black resin and then it's backed with you know the clear resin, the fiberglass resin, and uh, it's just very spotty. So I assume they use the black primer to get rid of all the imperfections and make it look uniform but it's this thick tar primer that that's not even fully solidified when it gets warm it starts to peel off and almost like desolidify again like it's it's really cheap crap so i have to go in with well, what brandon's doing right now is going in with acetone and trying to remove as much as he can so I can go in and start uh, reshaping the form. Yeah, the, the Vader project's still in the work. It's definitely on the horizon at some point. Um, I just need to get it prepped because obviously I'm not gonna make an entire video of me stripping, me or Brandon stripping off the entire primer uh, because it's been taking days. The helmet is finished, but we still have the the chest to work on and the shoulder pads and those pieces are super are like super caked on with primer so until all that primer is ripped off I can't really make a video out of it yet I'm definitely gonna fabricate the entire suit so that's It'll gonna be, be yeah so yeah like I mentioned in the last video I'm, I'm making him a little bit more flesh tone like my other Frankensteins are kind of they're very very saturated uh, because I based them off of one of the posters that I liked for the for the original film but uh, this one I'm going with a little bit more a little bit more like zombie look but yeah like that's this is probably a good point with uh, the skin tones and I just need to go in and shade a little bit more in certain areas, um, like in the ears, under the eyebrows, because even though like when you put this in harsh light, it kind of adds those shadows for you. You kind of still want to incorporate them. Otherwise, like you can put this in like a, a brightly lit room and it'll just look dull. It'll look unfinished. So I just have to add in all those all those elements of shading and highlighting. Yeah, I think that's good. Is it latex? Yeah. I'd have to figure out, I think, because I don't carry any latex paints, because I don't paint latex as much. Um, uh, but yeah, I could definitely, definitely work on something like that for you. Can you pass me a little towel? I figured. Yeah, but you you think that it, it wouldn't be some high quality thing, you know, because mm -hmm. gimmick, you know, the guy who makes the sculpts the Halloween store mask and sells the paint, it sounds like a good Yeah. But before he was that guy, he was just a pretty nice mask. Boom. 
Ba dum bum bum. Brent said he's getting a silicone Jason mask. Yeah. But he really liked the sculpt of the latex one, but they're so hard to find. So, which the silicone one he's getting is pretty good. I don't think the sculpt's one hundred percent, but it's it, it's definitely the best silicone remake Jason you can get. Mm. Yeah, I don't think latex is actually that difficult to paint. No. I've never done it before, to be honest. But, um... Who knows? It could be really fun. I think I'm going to be going in with some red. I think I want to get the red out of the way. You can see when I when I first painted it, I added all the, the reds in. Um, but then putting that clear over, it uh, got rid of a lot of them. It got, it, it got rid of a lot of the the deepness of the red. So I'm just going to go back in and put some more. I'm just adding a little bit of water to my paint. Oh, that's right. No, because I said the bad camper is hard to get. That was me, like, making it up. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the bed camper is easy get, easy to get. It's just that the new paint jobs aren't as good because the original guy who made the mask doesn't make them anymore. Mm. So it's like somebody that has the mold is making them now, and they're just not as good. That's fair. I just figured since since he didn't get one and opted out for the silicone one, I figured that they were just hard to find. Because that mask game, it's always hard to find stuff. It's always hard to find the stuff that you want. And when you do find it, it's always enough charging. So I got a question for you. What do you think of the title of the new Spider-Man movie? <laughs> oh my god. Since we were talking about it, it's something that the people probably want to know. Spider-Man... No Way Home. No Way Home. I don't care. More like Spider-Man No Way in Heck. Am I going to see another Spider-Man movie that's going to disappoint me? Alright, I mean that's what these pod... That's what these live streams are for, to just, yeah, just, just chat. So we're going to talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home. Let's talk about all the Spider-Mans. Yeah. Give uh, us something to talk about. This is going to, like, fill up the entire live stream. Hey, so, like Spider-Man Spider -Man No Way Home. I'm going to offend a lot of people. I hate the new Tom Holland Spider-Man. I think it's the worst version of Spider-Man they've come up with. He's just very... I don't know, he's too childish. I know they're trying to keep him in the the high school state for as long as they can milk it, because that's been one of the... As, at least that's like one of the longest complaints I've, I've continuously heard of Spider-Man is he graduates too early, he becomes an adult too early, we still want you know, the ultimate Spider-Man. I think it was called it. Remember the animated series? The ultimate? Yeah, it's Drake from Drake and Josh. Yeah. Peter, yeah, where he was in high school. And That's all good, but... I, I never liked when he was in high school. Yeah. I just... I wasn't a fan. I was always excited to see him, like, move on. Um, Because it, it just gets repetitive. Like, it's it's old. Like, I just... I mean, not that it's, like, old. It's just... It's, n it's not really interesting. Yeah, the changes that they made to his his character arc and everything, it, it doesn't make it more interesting. It just, just connects him from the source material. Yeah, like... like there's no Uncle Ben. How do you have Spider-Man without Uncle Ben? Without even mentioning Uncle Ben. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, like... He's, like... Yeah, he's just, like, the worst version of Spider-Man they've come up with so far. The suit's cool. I really... I really like the... the the suit, the Stark Tech outfit. But other than that, like, I don't know. And even at that, I preferred the first suit that they used when they filmed Civil War. 
and then they CGI over it over it with the design of the star suit because it looked more like the comic book. But yeah, but that suit was really rushed. Oh. Like um. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm looking forward to him growing up, to be honest. I kind of want him to to become an adult already. Because I'm, I'm already fed up with the high school Spider-Man. Yeah, Dylan's already in his mid-20s, so. Yeah, I so. Want him to play a kid. It's just, it's, it's very, uh, it's just not interesting. You know, I like, I like the Spider-Man where he's working for the Daily Bugle and he's having to deal with you know, working a job and being Spider-Man and yeah, not his relationships with his friends and girlfriend and, and family members because he has to choose between being Peter Parker for them or being Spider-Man for everybody else in the city. And I know they're planning on evolving him, definitely. I know he's not going to be high school Spider- Spider-Man forever, but I'm just looking forward to the, the evolution of that Peter Parker. I'm not, I'm not really fond of yeah, for what him, the said, heck? The behind the scenes Civil War suit was way better. Yeah. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Like, even like the Andrew Garfield, I, I liked his Spider Man. I wasn't a fan of his Peter Parker, but I definitely liked his Spider Man. Yeah. Um, uh, Tobey Maguire, obviously, that was the best. Yeah. And it, the and best it's not of like, both worlds. Yeah, and it, even if you, you disagree that he's not the best Spider Man because of Andrew's. He's the still movies, the best the Peter movies, Parker. Like, you can't compare Sam Raimi oh to any God. of the other Spider-Man directors. There's just no way. Oh, yeah. Spider-Man 2 is definitely my top Spider-Man movie of all of them. Um, like, as far as, like, the best. Story. But, yeah, the best story. But I definitely love the first one. Just for the sake of, like, <laughs> the green... Nostalgia. Yeah, it's just like... It was like the first... <laughs> But yeah, and it's like they can't... I know they shouldn't be trying to recreate that same feeling, but they can't up it. Yeah. up Like, up one it. Like, it's... it's It just decreases in value. Yeah. It seems more like a, like a Walmart knockoff or something. It's like... Andrew Garfield was like the you Walmart... Be, you still gotta respect the source. Yeah. You can't just change his whole storyline and tell me just because they feel like it's repetitive to repeat the death of Uncle Ben. It's crucial. When Uncle Ben's the entire reason. He's Spider-Man. <laughs> he became a, a like a true hero. Yeah. There's no Spider-Man without Uncle Ben. So it's ridiculous. Absolutely. They replaced Uncle Ben with freaking Tony Stark, and then Tony Stark dies, and. Yeah, so it's the That's... same. It's the same story. <laughs> Except with Iron but, Man. But they made it with Iron Man, so the MCU fans are tug on their heartstrings more. It's, it's terrible. I hated it. <coughs> and said, so I guess Hot Toys posted all three Spider-Men, but quickly took it down. I know nothing about it. I know nothing either. So take that and <laughs> shove it. No, I'm <coughs> I mean, there's, like, to be honest, like. It's it's quite obvious that they're both, like, Tom Holland, I mean, not Tom Holland, um, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to be in the new Spider-Man movie. They're taking one of each villain from their, from their, their own movies. They're taking, but, yeah, it's like, like, they're not using those villains and, like, rebooting them. Yeah, it's the same Like, it's too obvious, like, they they took one villain from... Um, the Amazing Spider-Man, and they took the other villain from, you know, the Tobey Maguire yeah. Spider-Man. So it's like... Yeah, and at first, because at first they just announced Jamie Foxx was coming back as Electro, and the report was like, he's just getting, it's a reboot, and they're just giving him a second chance at the character. And now there's but rumors then, about the Dr. Octavius Alfred coming back? coming back as <laughs> Doc Ock. It's like, there's no way, they're not doing the crossover. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to bring Willem Dafoe back as Green Goblin. And imagine you go to the theaters or you see the trailer and there's no type of Toby or Andrew. They just recast everybody from the ring first and reboot them. That wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, if that were the case, I would lose respect for those actors. Yeah, it would it, be... It's a total just, like, cash grab at that point. And I would, I would dislike the franchise even more. Like, 
and obviously this is my opinion, I hated Far From Home. <laughs> it was so dumb. There's things about it to like, but you can't you can't tell me that start to no. finish that's a good like A a good Spider Man movie or B just a competent superhero movie. It was just like a like another MCU movie. There was nothing special about it. Like the fact that it grossed one billion was shocking, but that doesn't prove that it's a good movie. It just proves that people love Spider Man. Yeah, absolutely. Like Mysterio was such had such potential, and they ruined it. They ruined. They revealed he was a villain early on in the in the movie, which obviously you know it was expected. Um, that's his whole character arc yeah. in the comics, like. Um, so it's like, you know, it, it was, it was expected. He was going to be the villain and he was going to be, you know, the one, um, that faced off or that was creating, you know, the, the elements throughout the entire thing. But then like they revealed it like so early yeah, they in the movie. Yeah, as someone that just hates Tony Stark, like the last villain. Yeah, it was just Iron like Man. another, it was like an Iron Man 3 villain. Like it was just another basic villain that has beef with with Tony, every everybody had beef with Tony. Even Wanda had beef with Tony. And he doesn't even like, know who she is. So, like, it's just ridiculous that, like, he, he his character was so boring, and um, it was just such lost potential. Yeah, and, that, and that's saying something when it's like you're saying someone that Jake Gyllenhaal played was boring. Like, he's a great actor. Yeah, it was like, so, and that's not on him. That's on the writer. I'll never blame an actor unless, like, everyone else in the movie is so good. Like, when he tries to shoot uh, Tom Holland at the end, and it's supposed to, like, be, like, this big emotional dramatic scene where it's like, oh, like, he was willing to kill him. It's like, I didn't feel it because they didn't bond enough throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he... Yeah, it wasn't heartbreaking enough. Like, if they would have kept... If they would have milked it for the entire movie, him being the good guy, him trying to help Peter out, and then at the end, you know, he pulls the gun on him and is willing to kill him. Yeah. Then that would have been like, damn. And like, that's what I give the itch the bar for home for, is you had no clue Vulture was Liz's dad. Because they, yeah. they did the play on, like, the biracial family thing, so it was totally not suspect. And they, and they kept they it a happened, secret for the entire movie until, like, the end when they revealed it. And that was, like, jaw drop. Like, it was cool. Yeah, it was, it was a good job. But it was almost like they couldn't hold it in for the whole movie. Like, we gotta tell everybody he's the villain. Yeah. I think Peter was the villain for the most of the movie. He would try to blow up the school bus. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Brandon also said, let's just talk about how much damn CGI they use now in the films. Just for his suit alone. See, with Spider-Man, I, I, don't, I don't mind the CGI because if you're going to make someone like... Whipping webs. But it's even like the, standing still shots he's in CG. But the fact that his entire suit is consistent, I feel like they, they, they yeah. like chilled out for this one. Yeah. Like definitely like the, the first, first Spider-Man entirely CGI'd, and yeah. it was such a great suit. Um, yeah, Filming a practical suit. And then with oh Civil War was entirely CGI, but like with this one, like at least they, there were certain scenes, that that had like the practical suit, but still for the majority it's like CGI. And it's like why. Why are you going to cover up that beautiful suit? Yeah, and like when you look back to the Raimi movies, the Tobey Maguire movies, even if the CGI isn't up to par where it is now, they do a CGI shot, and as soon as the camera gets get close to him, he'd be back in a practical suit. Oh, yeah. So there was no like disconnect of like, he's really close and he looks like a PS2 game. Yeah. Like in the Raimi movies, the CG was really good for me, 2001, 2002. But you have to use practical. You need CGI too complement practical effects, not to replace them. 100%. Even CGI now, even with how well they did Thanos' face and stuff, it's still too far behind to be able to make a 100% CG character no one knows. Yeah. Like the reason why people are cool with Thanos being completely CG is you know he's completely CG, so when you see him in the movie you're like, yeah, he looks good. Because he's a CG. CG. And that's why people say he looks good. I don't think he looks good, but maybe I'm just a hater. It's hard not to get upset sometimes with what Marvel's doing. But, um, I just don't like the direction they're going with Peter Parker. I'm really looking forward to this one. Because, like, when the the Andrew Garfield, well, it was going to be a trilogy, was coming out, 
the whole rumor for Sinister Six was like a big thing for me. I was like, I was like so excited for that. I remember growing up and that was like, that was like such a nostalgic thing to find out like, oh, they're trying to build up the Sinister Six, even though it wasn't like the original team. It was like, they were using like the Hobgoblin and Rhino and <laughs> I think the only original one was uh, Scorpion. <coughs> <coughs> but yeah, when when that was when that was like rumored or when that was going to be a thing, I was like super excited for that. Uh, and then they they bailed on it because I don't know what was that whole thing. Andrew Garfield said something negative about Sony and they fired his ass. But I I think it was just mainly the box office just wasn't yeah, it as. Just didn't Impactful. Or reviews, that too. Yeah. But so they're just like, let's reboot it again. But instead, they use the yeah, whatever the MCU. That they they like announce. That's almost never the truth. When they say someone quit or someone fired, got fired or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's just almost always a cover up for something way worse. It's always the actor's fault. Yeah. Or Which, it was like, oh, he didn't feel it anymore, so he left the project. Or. Or there were creative differences. That's that's the one that gets passed around the most, is creative differences. When it's like mm-hmm. typically I don't I wouldn't assume actors and directors would have creative differences because the actor is hired to do what he's the, told the to do. The director needs them to do. They're not they're, there's no creative control for an actor unless it's like a comedy where they can improv their, their lines. But they don't improv the whole script. <laughs> they definitely have to follow Instruction. Yeah, they definitely butter it up for the sake of getting rid of a yeah. an actor that you know where the fans are gonna have like a negative impact on the franchise and there's gonna be a lot of backlash. Yeah, or they could just be petty and they could just try and cancel somebody that they don't like, like what uh, Jeff Jones is trying to do with Zack Snyder with DC right now, where they announced a new Superman that's not Henry Cavill no, like, and a new Superwoman that's uh, not Henry, like another. Like two Kryptonians that aren't Henry Cavill coming back because that was Snyder's like baby, basically. I don't understand. I when it's obviously <laughs> something the fans want, they shouldn't try and not do it just because they don't like the guy or whatever. The don't you guys is. care about money? Yeah, exactly. They're like, no, we'd rather be petty and lose so much money and get joked about, get laughed at. It just doesn't make sense. And that's probably why the MCU's killing it, because Disney just thinks about money. They're like, oh, you got an idea for a movie? Let's make it. Let's make some money. Except with Gina... <laughs> What's her name? Gina Carano? Yeah, Carano. Carano. Oh. <coughs> that was... That was unfortunate. But I also don't believe it's 100% her fault. Um, I mean, definitely, like... She definitely said what she said. She definitely said what she said. Um, but, uh, from what she's explained, that was 100% not her intention. That's not what she meant, but I feel like it's so easy to get caught up into social media. You don't really, like, take into consideration, you know, the, the consequences of trying to combat with a multi-billion dollar franchise. I mean, if they tell you, you know stop doing something like yeah you have all the right to continue doing something but if it you know defies what your pretty much boss is asking you to do like they have every right to fire you not saying they should have obviously that was terrible that was a terrible idea but i just this is why i don't like social media at all like you lost your job based off of social media quote unquote just people not which, it wasn't a great opinion, but it's an opinion, and she has the right to her opinion, because this is the country we live in. You have the right to say whatever you want to say. Yeah, but... Whether when, or not you like it, because I don't like what she said, and I'm sure Rob doesn't <laughs> agree with what she said, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's literally the First Amendment. You can say what, what's on your mind, but then you get punished for saying what's on your mind. If I had the mind. job of a lifetime, and I ruined it, by making a tweet 
Or like, I made a tweet, and they're like, please don't do that. Like, this is, this is affecting the image of our business. Yeah, potentially problematic. problematic. And then you, you continuously kind of walk, walk, the, the, walk <laughs> the line. Yeah. You know, like, you, it's dangerous. Like, I would completely abandon all forms of social media. Or at least, like, you know. Uh, stating kind of edgy opinions just for the sake of my career like what it's not worth it yeah. it's not worth it and I'm sure because Disney's super uh, on top of their actors I'm I'm 100% sure that there was something in her contract that said like <laughs> avoid controversial situations and if you make them on I'm sure that there had to be something in their contract along I'm, those lines I'm sure 100% they warned her at least. Yeah. And I'm not condoning the actions that they made to fire her. Obviously, that's stupid. Um, because, you know, she was probably the only, other than Ahsoka, she's probably the only female character, f new female character, obviously, if we're, like, going back to, like, Leia and all that. Um, she's, like, one of the new female characters that weren't forced into people trying to like them and respect them. Like, I don't want to, like, jump into that rabbit hole of yeah. all that. But, like, I really liked her, and I really, like, like looked at her as, like, a powerful character role as to, like, you know, Captain Marvel, them trying to shove it down your throats that she's the strongest, she's and the she's best, and she's a woman. You know, I that's, like... That's like. Hear me growl on the station. That's like if they got Captain America and they're like, he's strong, he's powerful, but most importantly, he's a man. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's ridiculous. And she was one of the, the few characters that they actually evolved <laughs> in a way that I really saw her as like, you know, a strong, a strong female role, and I, I liked it. And then to get rid of that. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, and she was the kind of character where it's like, it's like Bill Burr's character, where they're not, they're not regulars on the show, but when they show up for an episode or two, you're like, hey, it's the homie, look who's back. Exactly. And it's just like, are they going to recast her, kill her? <laughs> they're not going to recast her, definitely. <laughs> I think that would be stupid. Uh, they recast Edward Norton for Mark Ruffalo. I think that... I, I don't think she reached her potential... I don't think she reached her potential as, as like, a character in Star Wars to want to recast. It's not like recasting Luke. It's like trying to recast Bill Burr's character. You know, like, she had the potential to reach that level of, you know, yeah. iconicness. But she, she, she couldn't make it past two seasons. And that sucks. Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely don't think they're going to recast her, but... I have a feeling they might hire her back. I feel like, I feel like Disney is starting to listen to their fans more, and uh, they obviously fired her for the sake of their image. But if the image is, means less to the fans than the actions they took, like they're obviously going to bring back what makes money and what the yeah, fans. Yeah, they brought back James Gunn. Yeah. Money talks, and Disney always listens. So. Okay. That's a lot of politics. <laughs> yeah. It gets exhausting talking about this crap. Well, it kind of just like in, it so. kind of like ruins you know the whole spectrum of the franchise. You just think of it as like this amazing you know part of cinema history, Star Wars, and then you get into the whole politics of it and you're like, "Eh, this is kind of gross." Yeah, that's kind of the thing that sucks about getting into the industry behind the scenes where it's like people people that made you want to pursue it turns out that they're not the greatest people. And that's, that's not even political opinions, just like attitude and the way that they talk to people and stuff, where they, they think they're entitled just because they are who they are. It's really uh, unfortunate. Yeah, there, people there's... like us that are starting out and want to want to meet these people, and then you don't want to anymore because they're just like everybody else. It's like that saying, don't meet your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's only one celebrity I met at like a convention that I wasn't particularly happy that it turned out the way it turned out but because everybody seems to respect the fact that people are fans of them 
but some people have their own agenda that they rather just talk to you about instead of, even though you're the person they're trying to meet them. <laughs> they're like, oh, you want to talk to me and ask me questions? Well, I want you to go on my website and like all my photos or whatever it is. It's just like, come on, man. Horrible, man. Politics, you. Let's go to some social media questions. Some social media questions. Some because There's hardly our Instagrams have been dry as heck lately. Yeah. Well, this one was more for me, but it says, have you ever had a mask melt or rot? No, because I take care of my masks. Have you? I know you don't collect masks, but have you ever had anything of yours deteriorate without that being the plan? Oh, 100%. Um... Silicone, um, it rots really badly if you don't take care of it. Um, even if it's like indoors, you leave it exposed to oxygen and it it, it starts to, uh, what's the term? It starts to leach, meaning it, it starts to separate from the, the reactant because like with these chemicals, chemicals it's a it's a two-part mixture you know you have part a part b whether it's 50 50 or it's 10 percent uh 90 percent mixture um something like silicone which is a i believe it's like a organic material i'm not 100 percent sure but it, it'll start to rot like actually rot um and it'll, it'll leach where like i like i mentioned it it separates from a and b and it becomes like sticky and yellowy and gross. And uh, that's why like most of my molds, I, I keep them in uh, Tupperware boxes and I put them face down to preserve them as long as I can. So obviously silicone is really, really, really expensive. For like a five gallon, you're looking at like 600 bucks of the good stuff, obviously. You find cheap shit, but I don't, I don't like cheap silicone. So a mold, a mold needs to be, you know, well taken care of. Um, resins, I do think resins um, rot. I'm 100% sure resin rots at some point. But not, not really. It takes a lot, I would say. I've never had any of my resin castings start to go bad or anything weird like that but I just say it's just best to take care of your stuff keep it indoors keep it out of sunlight um, yeah I'm sorry I don't think I, I, I don't think le uh, silicone is an organic material I think it, I think it's latex I believe latex is like an organic material and latex rots, definitely. Well, I've never had anything latex that, that rotted. Like yeah, but you take care of your stuff. I, yeah, but even like the first mask I ever had when I was like 10 or 11, it's balled up and thrown in my closet. But there's no rot. Like the paint has sure flaked off because it's cheap paint and it's a, it's a Ruby's mask from <laughs> Ruby's <2010. masks. laughs> from Like seriously, I have an old Freddy Krueger from like 2010. Oh my god. And like, the paint on the nose has come off, so his nose just looks white, but it hasn't rotted. Yeah. But it's been kept out of the sun. The sun will make the dust look off. So, through every passing of layers of paint, I clean out my brush completely and I just use like a little air cleaner or a little airbrush cleaner. You could use like Windex or you know a little bit of alcohol. Not acetone. Definitely not acetone. But um <coughs> Yeah, a nice scotch or a coat. Um I used to use water to like rinse it out little by little, but it doesn't clean it as good. Like this thing is like there's a little price tag on it. It's like 10 bucks for this this little thing. Like, this isn't like a big spray bottle. It's like the size of my hand. Um, but if you're using it wisely, 
it could last a while, which <coughs> I say use it as much as you need rather that than clog up your brush, but still, like. Oh, and for those of you that were here last live stream, I got a new airbrush. <laughs> it's a little cheap one. I just bought it for the sake of the video. Um, but, um, yeah, this thing's like 60 bucks. Like, it's really cheap. And I usually paint with the, the little end, like, twisted off so I can get that, like, needle point to get, like, fine precision. And sometimes I, I paint with, like, the back off because it can help me just... <laughs> if you're wondering why we're coughing, <coughs> it's the airbrush cleaner. Um, I have this little thing to spray in, but I need to change out the filters. Um, but yeah, when this stuff gets in the air, it's, it's, it's really nasty. But yeah, I, I keep this open so I can adjust the needle um, just to control the amount of paint that's coming through. Uh, but I have it on just because I just, when I'm not, because I know I'm not going to adjust through this paint project, so it just keeps it clean and I, I don't accidentally bend the, the needle. See you, Brandon. See you next Friday. I'm going to be here. Every I'm Friday. Be here too. Yeah. This is going to be an every Friday thing. It's going to get a lot more interesting, to be honest. Like, like this Friday, uh, or today, I just kind of wanted to finish where I left off. And 100% people aren't as interested in Frankenstein as I am, or that few variety of people that are. So, I don't expect, like, much out of this. Like, I'm doing this just for the sake of fun. Like, I enjoy doing this. Um, but definitely I will later on, later down the line, be working on a little bit more interesting pieces. Uh, but yeah, see you, Brandon. So I'm going in now with like, technically it's like the second darkest shade of the of the green that I'm going to use to shadow. I'm going to go with one more and that one's going to be almost like a black green. And that's going to be for like the real harsh shadows. Um, you can kind of see like how in the ear it almost looks black. Um, but when you turn it, you lose it. So I'm going to be going in and trying to darken a lot of those areas I mean painting is really just your preference and like like airbrushing you really have to have a preference of how far you want to go with highlights and shadowing you know you can make something look really just crazy really like cinematic or you could do something a little bit more realistic or something you know kind of you know lighter tone like, if you don't want to, like, take the risk and go, like, full out shadows. But I, I, I kind of, like, float in the in-between. I don't go really harsh, and I don't go really light. I just keep it, like, in the medium, which can be good at, to some degree, but, like, negative in others. Like, um, like, the benefits of, like, going really dark is you just get... Uh, you just really highlight a lot of the work, the, the sculpting, you know, the artwork behind it. Um, like you can, like, like see here, like the darker you go, the more you kind of accentuate, <laughs> I guess the term would be, the, the, the crease, you know, like Frankenstein, the actor, Boris Karloff, he was missing teeth there, so when he would film he would kind of suck in his cheek and that's what created that like iconic like Frankenstein effect. So you know the darker you go the 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 kind of more uh, outlined your creature is but I don't know I just don't want to risk going that far and potentially regretting it because with airbrushing it's it's really hard to to go back like if you want to go back there's a lot of things you'll have to do. You'll have to re-layer certain areas, or you might have to strip 
the whole thing down and restart. Like, it really depends on what you're doing. Like this, like, if I went black right here, I could kind of just block off some areas and then go in with white to cancel out the black and then re-layer it just in the nose. But, like, if I did it, like, somewhere, like, in here, there's not really much I can do other than kind of redoing the whole area. Otherwise, you'll have, like, a obvious, like, patchwork job. So it's kind of tricky just trying not to mess up. That's why sometimes I get kind of quiet and focused because there's certain areas um, I just can't risk it. And sometimes if you go a little overboard, it's easy just to kind of wipe it while it's wet. Um, What's that? <clears throat> the creators of Avatar The Last Airbender are going to be having their own Avatar universe where they're going to make um, new movies and new TV series with new characters in the Avatar universe. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I think they're trying to market. Or they're trying to... I'm sure they started doing this when the hype for Avatar came out. It was like the number one trending show on Netflix at one point and now they just want to milk it out which well, the reason is because they were making a live action show for Netflix oh god and they've been developing it for a couple years now but Netflix kind of uh, went against their promises to the creators because the creators had the biggest um, say in the show and then Netflix like pulled their contract into basically like we're going to make the show with or without you, so if you don't like what we're doing, type thing. That's and they just got fed up and they left. So now Nickelodeon's giving them, like, free range to do whatever they want based on the Avatar universe. So it's less it's less Netflix using them for money by creating a universe. It's more like Nickelodeon letting them do what they want to do because they just got screwed out of a really, like, awesome opportunity to, to make the show that they made 20 years later in live action, which is probably what most... TV show creators want is to see it in real life, but they can never yeah. afford it, so they just have people draw it for them, and they just pay voice actors. Yeah. Which, granted, there are people that definitely like making animation, but people that get into, like, film writing and script work and stuff typically want to make movies, movies or at least live-action series. I know I would, personally. I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. Just uh, joined the, the live and commented what's something you want to sculpt but are hesitant or nervous to sculpt. Um, that could be a whole slew of things. I wouldn't say I'm like hesitant or nervous. I'm just very cautious with my, like I'm just very like time orientated. So if I feel like something is going to take me longer than a year, I really have to contemplate if it's going to be my priority or if I have other priorities in line. I really have to see like where that's going to fit in, when and where. Like for example, the Raptor project, I didn't want to I don't want to start on it until I have like a good chunk of time to really just kind of sit down and focus because that's that's a project I've I've wanted to work for, on for the longest. So to mess it up would be such a shame. So I guess, yeah, to some degree, I'm kind of hesitant to start on it. Um, something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do something ambitious, like make something full size. Um, but there's a lot of variables to that, which is number one, expenses. Um, right off the bat. 
yeah, number one is expensive. Obviously, like, wet clay is, like, really cheap, and, like, anybody can afford a full stack of wet clay. And, uh, I have, I think it's, like, 20 bucks for, like, 50-pound bag of wet clay. Like, two 25-pound bags, something like that. Um, it's crazy, but, um, I have a lot of foam in my backyard, a lot of, like, that rigid polyurethane sculpting foam. So it's like, I could definitely like work something out with that, but I, I just don't know yet. Like I kind of, when I'm focused on something, I kind of just stay focused on it and I don't really worry. I'll have like one thing on the back of my mind, but like if I were to like say like something I would want to do at some point, uh, would probably make like a, like a costume size Godzilla head. Like definitely not life size. <laughs> like Which is definitely wearable. Yeah, like... Like, the original Godzilla was, you know, it was a costume, obviously. So, like, if I can make something, like, around that size, or even a little bit bigger, to be honest, like, something massive. Like, I, I, I always wanted to do a T-Rex head, but that's so far out of reach right now where it's I'm not really, like, dwelling on it as much. That's why I'm kind of, like, focusing on the raptor. But, like, a T-Rex head would be amazing to do. It would take... A long ass time 100% but I wouldn't care like with with my passion projects I don't really care about time frame or anything I just want it to look perfect because my passion projects are essentially like what is my resume as far as like my work like I don't like when I do like little side jobs like I don't put those on my resume because I didn't put my soul into it like there's a difference from putting your heart into something as to putting your soul into something. And it's easy to, to put your heart into something, especially like a project for someone else or, um, you know, like something that you're just interested in and you're excited to work on. Like it's, it's easy to put your heart into something. But to put it your soul, because when you put your, when you do like uh, projects for clientele, like you have deadlines, you have time frames, you can only work on it for a certain amount of time before, you know, you have to just, call it call it done and move on but with like my personal projects like I put in as much time as I need I don't worry about how long it's going to take me um, I don't really give myself a deadline I just work on it until I am 100% content so yeah like I just that's that's how I feel towards my art project so whatever I work on like I just got to make sure I got time for it. Like, if I'm going to do a T-Rex, like, I'm going to put my soul into it, and I, I better make sure I have enough time for that. Um, but right now, my soul project is my little Godzilla. Um, I've been back and forth on it. Like, originally, it was, it was kind of like a commission, somewhat of a commission piece. Um, but I'm such, like, a a nerd for Godzilla where um, the kind of commission job went away because it, it wasn't worth the amount of time I was going to put in like I can't just sculpt out you know a two foot Godzilla bust in a in a couple weeks and just call it done like that's just that's just not how I am you know like I, I, I couldn't I don't like rushing things and if you know the client doesn't have the time for it like I just it's just not worth it. So with this one, yeah. So with this one, it's it's going to become uh, a mass producible piece, meaning like it's not for one person and one person only. Um, and for the client, he's definitely going to get one. But when it's you know when it's available for mass production, um, it's not going to be a unique piece like it would like it would have originally been. But yeah, like like I said, I'm such a big fan of Godzilla. Like I, I can't just sculpt something half-ass for the sake of time. Um, I'm gonna put like my everything into it. And it this this project was really weird. Like like my my Frankenstein here was kind of straightforward because like I knew what I wanted and I knew what level of detail I wanted to get it to. So, like, I, I, I'm not, like, a huge fan of, like, clientele work. 
Um, as to obviously, like obviously, I I do it because it's it pays the bills. But with like my passion projects, like it's so nice to have that free range of time to kind of just perfect it. And with this one, like, <coughs> um, it took me quite a bit of time. It was my first like. Um, somewhat like detailed human face he's not really like a human but you know the futuristics of it definitely are um, and he took me it took me four months to sculpt him but I was also working full time so as far as like hours I put into it I'm not really sure I was working full time commuting four hours a day so eight hours plus four hours uh, minus maybe two hours of eating and showering when I got home and whatever time I had left over I put into him so it was like it was a decent amount of time I put into finishing him and um but it was like straightforward like I knew what I wanted I knew where where I was gonna go with it but with the Godzilla I didn't know what I wanted because I was trying to figure out what the other what the client wanted so I went towards that direction and I realized that direction is terrible if I want to make it look good I have to put at least a few months into it like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mold something you know I'm not gonna spend like two thousand dollars to mold something just for it to look okay that's as an artist that's it's gross so I ended up putting in you know like four months worth of time uh, realized <coughs> it could be better uh, and I spend an entire night. It was probably like 12 at night I was working on it. And I just, I took a break and I looked at it and I was like, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it with all my heart. And I, I don't want my name attached to this as far as like it being on like my resume or something. So I spent, it was like probably like seven in the morning. So it was like I spent seven hours just cutting it apart, repositioning, probably a little less than that. Um, I did work on some other stuff that night but I just spent like a couple hours just completely stripping it down of all its scale patterns cutting it apart repositioning the neck making it look more less like a puppet and more like an, an actual like creature uh, and then I had to do it that night because I knew if I didn't do it I would have uh, I would definitely have I wouldn't have had the balls to go back and cut it apart again. So, yeah, that was that was where I completely flipped the entire project to a uh, client project to an uh, actual like passion project, which I don't regret it at all because um, I'm still gonna sell it uh, to the client. But I also, you know, have the the option now to, you know. Um, sell it to the public as well. Which I don't really care about that stuff. I just care about creating a nice piece and you know, business aside, my my goals if my goals for each sculpture I do from this point on are are kind of a uh, a visual representation of growth. I don't want the last sculpture to look better than the than the newest sculpture. I don't want you know, to look back uh, two years from now and be like, wow, that sculpture looked way better. I'm surprised I, I'm i barely at this level of growth. It seems like I, I've hardly grown any. I don't want to, I don't want to be there, you know. I want to look back every year and every sculpture to um, uh, progress, um, you know, you know, I just want, I want it to look better every single year. I want, it to, I want to progress as an artist, and I don't want to backslide. Just came through with another question. Said if there, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> if there was any iconic design, be it character, or concept, etc., and there were no constraints, who or what would you want to put your own spin on? Which you're already doing for so I'd say somebody else. Hmm. So, 
I love that question because that's kind of my, I'm going to be done with airbrushing for a little bit, but um, that's kind of my, my goal with everything I sculpt. I kind of sculpt what I want and what's kind of, what's not like available to me because I'm a huge like statue collector. And um, for example, the only reason I did this Frankenstein was because I really, really wanted um, like a very detailed Frankenstein bust. Um, and I remember looking online, you know, Sideshow had some, um, and they were just, they were just really, really bad. And, um, there's like a, like, I also wanted this specific size because, you know, trying to get like a full scale bus, there's only so much space you have for like stuff like that. So I was like, I, I, I want, um, you know, at least like a foot tall little Frankenstein bus. Uh, really detailed, something interesting, something I haven't seen before. And um, that was kind of like what, what kind of brought my attention to want to create create this statue. Was I, just, I just wanted to see it. I wanted to have a collectible um, that I imagined. And same with Godzilla. Now I'm kind of recreating what I would want in like a Godzilla statue. But as far as like something I would want to take like my own spin on, like for future preferences, um, probably Batman. I mean, that's I feel like that's an obvious choice for myself because um, my number one favorite superhero is 100% Batman. And to kind of create my own version, my own take on it would be like a, and it be like credited, like for the sake of, like for, as like the example of like it being used um, as a concept would be, you know, Insane. I, I, I don't think that's a possibility, but it definitely, possibility. definitely would be an amazing achievement of if I accomplish something like that. But yeah, I would say Batman. I knew that would give you the answer too, because that's also my answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe one day. I definitely would love the concept of my Frankenstein to be used, but it's. It, I don't think it's as um, unique in the sense. Like it, it is as far. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to, how to explain this. Like, it's definitely not the original Frankenstein. It's definitely um, inspired. It's it's definitely inspired by it, but it is my somewhat my own take on it. Um, and I, I like for me, I like I like the originals. I like I like everything original about characters, and I like it slightly modernized. I don't like when they try to completely redesign it into this crazy looking creature. Like, what's a good example? What's a good example? Spider-Man that we were just talking about trying to modernize it, but that's more in the sense of making it more futuristic than modern. Yeah, like but, I mean, like um, as design-wise. Let me think. I have Frankenstein. No, I'm just kidding. We don't yeah. need to talk about I Frankenstein. Oh my God, that's an, that's an amazing example. What, like, what is that? That's not Frankenstein. It's an with stitches and that's, abs. that's the most modernized version of Frankenstein you could find. It's terrible. Yeah. There he, was a... he speaks proper English. <laughs> he. He was Two Face. That's <laughs> yeah. It's just that's so terrible, but um. Yeah, like I like I like slightly modernized modernized versions of the original. Yeah, um, that's what I liked about if you haven't seen Victor Frankenstein, the movie with uh, James McAvoy and Danny Radcliffe. I wasn't a fan of that because yeah. Frankenstein Frankenstein only came out for like two seconds at the end. Just okay, to well it's about Victor. I don't Frankenstein. care about Victor Frankenstein. It's the Frank title of the movie, Robert. That's like making Spider Man and making it about without Uncle Ben. ben they no, did it. making they it about did Uncle it. Ben. <laughs> Only make it about, <laughs> yeah. I prefer that. Only and then Spider-Man comes out at the end just for a little bit. <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> I'm listening to us now that now that the light is catching up. It's just us going back and forth. <laughs> it's just about Uncle Ben. That's comedy. For those of you that don't know, I'm watching the live stream in a remote location. <laughs> right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> <Behind the camera. laughs> I'm listening to it 
in an earbud in one of my ears, and then with my other ear, I'm interacting with Robert in real time. So the live stream's like delayed by like 10 or 15 seconds to what we actually say. So after we go back and forth and discuss something, I hear it in my ear like, yeah. like an echo. So yeah. that was just funny that all of a sudden I just hear us <laughs> arguing about Victor Frankenstein. I'm changing my camera position because I just realized like I'm like this. But uh, I'm right now I'm putting in the eyes. I'm putting in, if you didn't know, I'm painting in the, the whites of his eyes. Um, and I just really need to be up close for this because I can't really see. And yes, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I use my saliva to thin out the pain. <laughs> I'm not going to do that anymore. Why not? You're, you've already been doing it this long. I remember doing it last week when you were painting, when we were doing the little Godzillas. Oh, the, yeah, but that was for me. Oh, just to let you know, it's 8.20, we got 40 minutes. Which should be plenty of time, but still, Ah. just letting you know. People live stream for five hours. Not (laughs) we're not going to make this five hours. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, I'm definitely going to cut this live stream shorter than the last time, because... You didn't, well, last time you just extended it. Mm-hmm. We're not cutting this one short. We're staying on schedule this time. Yeah, last these, time I was like, what the heck, man? I've been away for it. Like the whole day. These live streams are only going to be like um, two hours. But um, if I do end up doing like a three-hour thing, it, it's got to be something special. Um, there's definitely going to be times where I'm just going to go over. But that's going to be during the day. Not at like seven. I'd probably start like at five, if I if I'm really looking to have a lot more time. Um, yeah, we'll try and end at the same time every time. Probably not. Regardless of the time we start. Mm-hmm. But chances are we'll mostly be seven to nine every Friday from now on. Yeah. Unless otherwise, well, if it's anything different. We'll let y'all know in advance on social media. By the way, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Go subscribe. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing, bro? I've been stuck at 58, and I'm grateful for the 58, 100%. But I don't want to make another fake account to follow Robert to boost his ego. (laughs) Can y'all do it for real? (laughs) Just, just... Just hit that subscribe button. You don't have to hit the notifications. You, you don't, don't have to watch any of the videos. You don't have to like us or support us. Just, you know. Just subscribe. Put us in the algorithm, baby. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Share with your friends. Ask them. Just be like, can I borrow your phone for a second? Go on their phone. Log into their YouTube account. And hit subscribe. Yeah, they don't have to know. They don't have to know. And then and just give it back to them. They'll find out. They'll be, they'll be like, wait, who's this? I don't remember subscribing. And then they'll click on a video and they'll fall in love. Exactly. Help the cause. <laughs> support the charity. Support the, support Brandon. <laughs> Honestly, I need all that help I need to get right now. Yeah, so I got the whites of his... I'm doing it again. Yeah, screw it. That was nasty. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I need water. So the technically Stop looking at me. advertising that we call this live because it is delayed by a few it's it's live. False advertising. Mm. I'm calling bull. I'm asleep drunk. I uh, know, me too. I'm so tired. I'm more like sleep deprived. <laughs> Just adjusting the camera right now. There Coming we go. Back at it it's with fine. another fire question. Are you ready, kids? Give me that fire question. I'm supposed to say. I got the water to cool. I now. captain. No, it's gay. Okay. Go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! I can't wait to hear that in five seconds. It's okay. I love gay people. Okay, a little more than five seconds. We're still not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. That was hilarious. Okay, from a painting perspective. Do you have any preferences or habits that you lean to into when painting, such as color bias or particular patterns, etc.? He likes licking paintbrushes. Yeah. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> so. Which so like, isn't a technique of painting; it's just a technique of 
clean the paintbrush. Are we talking about are we water. talking about techniques or are we talking about habits? Because there's well, a. Let's say any preferences or habits that you lean into when painting. Uh, I'm, I assume he, he's referring to preferences as like. <laughs> <laughs> to prefer to eat paint yeah. off your paintbrush. Mm. It's like fun dip. You just dip it in the paint, and oh. lick it off. Um. I I I don't really know. Like I. Huh. You just, you got me stuck on licking my paintbrush, and that's like the only thing I can think of <laughs> of a habit I pick up. Mm, closing my lids. Yeah. That's like the basic and essential habit you need to kind of continuously apply to your, your working um, moments. Like, constantly closing your lids, constantly keeping your place, your little like setup organized. It sounds dumb. Like it, 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 it almost sounds like non-essential. If you saw the rest of you'd call bullshit on that statement. Cause no, my studio's clean. Let me show off my. Don't look at that area. <laughs> Go to the main <laughs> filming area. <laughs> the main. <laughs> Where it's all the junk. No, room. but the majority of my studio is really organized. And when I, especially when I sculpt and paint, when you when you create like a, uh, an ecosystem of a mess for roaches to live in, like it. Not, not like not literally, but it gets so dirty. It's it's almost like intolerable to work. You don't um, gotta worry about that. Your your apprentice is a pest control operator. That's true. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just always try to stay organized as I'm working, putting things away. That's a habit. Um, I for a while I I built the habit of not doing that. One hundred percent. That was an issue of mine that I. I kept dealing with was not being able to put things away and um, I didn't really understand like I, re I remember like I don't want to get like too into it but I was, I was always like nitpicked of like leaving pencils out like the, the most minuscule thing obviously like I definitely have done worse than that <laughs> but like as far as like the, the, the most minuscule thing is leaving a pencil out like I understand now how frustrating that could be um how being disorganized down to you know an eraser or you know, like i explained a pencil like it's so frustrating because you're you're consistently trying to like move forward as you're working and when the smallest thing is out of place it's hard to get back on track like or like when we were uh cutting the foam down for the boss wrapped your head and you couldn't find the, the little scraper. Yeah, I left. You had one that was the, not the shape you preferred. Yeah, I missed. I misplaced one of my my little sculpting tools, and I remember that was just like the most like frustrating like thing I felt in in months. Yeah, and he, in you months. Know he lost hope because he asked me to look for it. And what happened? You found it first first glance. Like the second I walked in here, I'm like, I bet it's over there, and I just picked. And it's because I'm so used to having something in a certain area and no other place. Like, it's like, it's right there. Every time I need it, it's right there. And when it's not there, it's the most frustrating feeling ever because your mind goes into like a, a panic state. And yeah, like, and it wasn't but it's not that, here. Where is it? It wasn't even that you couldn't find it. Like you looked in the wrong area. You looked exactly where it was and just didn't notice it was right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You're like, wait, I looked there. Show me where it was. And I put it back exactly how I found it. And he's like... Dang it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> but yeah, that that going back to the question, those are those are some painting habits you got to pick up because the most messy medium is is what I'm trying to say. It's like the messier the medium is, the more organized you have to be. Otherwise, you're just gonna create chaos. Um, like with fiberglassing, like anything like casting, resin, um, urethanes, um, silicone, like all that stuff. Like the messier you are, the the worst, the the whole, you know, the whole thing's gonna go for you. Like yeah, it's 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 mainly a damper on the process. Uh huh. Because it's such a tedious, like every little job's tedious. Sculpting's tedious, painting's tedious, and if you do anything that will jeopardize the the quickness and the efficiency efficiency then you're just you're just getting in your own way and it's not that you're going to make the piece worse 
it's just going to take you longer to finish it. That, that's a great thing. That's a great way to put it. It's like you get in your own way. And like, see, I just, yeah, and you're not, you're not hindering the outcome of the piece. It's just how long it's going to take for you to get to that point because you keep putting a, a hurdle in front of yourself. Yeah. For no reason other than you're just being lazy. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of what you get for being lazy. Robert. Friend. <laughs> yeah. And then number one thing, always clean your brushes after you use them. Preferably with your tongue. So many times. I'm not going to say who. You know who you are. <laughs> I'm calling you out live. I'm not gonna say it anymore. I'm, I'm just not gonna say it. But yeah, it's like it's 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 painful to see dry brushes just just air caked, drying out. Just <laughs> like, caked with pain. It's 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 painful to see. It's painful. It's painful to see. You just gotta. I You've gotta, been awake for so long. We're cracking dad jokes now. All you gotta do is just rinse it underwater when you're done using it, or lick it. Do what I do. Just lick your brush when you're done using it. Oh, the homie just said you got a new question and subscriber. Make sure to click the bell. <laughs> click the bell. Click the bell. We don't, we're just trying to get people subscribed. We're not worried about the bell at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I definitely appreciate the views. Like, it just shows me like how much people appreciate like the things I work on like yeah like I like I like I explained um before I originally made this channel just for the sake of having an outlet to work on my stuff and just you know whoever likes it can come watch like it's fun for me like it's I I work so so much in the dark where um I I don't know how how else to put it, it gets kind of lonely <laughs> you know being able to like um share share the projects I work on share the, the process of the things I work on it it's fun it's I love it um so for those of you that want to subscribe subscribe for more videos I'd appreciate that yeah, and I was gonna say it's probably super fun to share here for us because we spend years watching people like Adam Savage on YouTube sharing the stuff that he's doing even though he's not obligated to show us yeah but or cosplay Chris <laughs> You know. Cosplay Chris. Cosplay Chris, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just people that, like, we're not trying to make videos like theirs because that's just unoriginal. That's not what it's about. But yeah, it, definitely it's definitely inspiring the, the route we're taking as far as making costumes, props, and whatnot, and just sharing the process and all that stuff. Look at me, Brandon. Hmm? just want to see um, there we go. So yeah, I just I just asked Brandon to look at me to see how big his the iris is, uh, because I've definitely had a habit of making his eyeballs his iris is like really small, and it makes him look like he's on cocaine. Well, then using me for reference probably isn't a good idea. Cause I'm full of that stuff. Shut up, Brandon. For legal purposes, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need my parole officer on me. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I got you laughing. Uh, I caught you slipping. You need to get a nap. Not your mom. Take a nap. Lazy. <laughs> so with my my the. <laughs> I stutter a lot. One of the big concepts of, of my Frankenstein that I kind of incorporated was that he has blind eyes, because obviously like when a corpse. You know, it starts to, or when a body starts to um, rot, uh, the eyeballs kind of build like this, like fogginess to them, like this dead look to them. So I kind of incorporate that, incorporate that with my Frankenstein. Like, even though it doesn't make any sense, because how is he gonna get up, walk around, and you know, exist if he's blind? But I don't know. Like, I just, I just like it. It just looks cool. I mean, how can lightning, lightning bring a bunch of dead body parts into one? Exactly. It so doesn't have to make who sense. Cares? This is why fiction exists. If you explained it, then it's not fiction anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you make it too complicated, J.K. Rowling. I don't know what. <laughs> so, so yeah, how I start off with his eyes, I, I paint, I paint, uh, I outline the iris, um, and then to make it like 
kind of foggy. I'll go in with the airbrush and I'll layer on, you know, little spritz of gray and I'll, I'll give this like foggy illusion, but it's nice to have this black background to work off of. Um, it'll make sense in a little bit. The homie said, Yo, tell, y'all keep up the good work and tell Robert I said thanks for answering my questions. I always like to pick artist brains. Who said that? The homie that I brought through here. Oh, the homie. I thanks, remember. the homie. Thank the homie. So for those of you watching, um, I don't know if you're new. I don't know if you've been here this whole time. Next Friday, I'm going live again. Uh, uh, I'm really working these things out. You know, this is the third live stream, which, you know, you could say I should have had, have everything worked out by now, but I don't. Because um, that's just, that's just how it is. So uh, next Friday, we're going to figure out something. I'll probably have something posted Monday as far as what I'm going to be live streaming for. Um, but it's definitely going to be something unique. Um, something I probably haven't done before. Um, unless I go back to Godzilla, then you'll just see me sculpting Godzilla. And we can talk a lot about Godzilla because that movie's coming out. And I'm definitely going to do a kind of like a podcast for when the movie comes out because I definitely want to talk about it. And I'll definitely be working on my Godzilla during that duration. So um, it's going to be awesome. But uh, I'm, once I buy that Shin Godzilla that I mentioned in the beginning of the live stream, um, I'm gonna probably make a video out of it and kind of live stream some of that, some of that process. Ray, why don't you ask me a question? How's it going, man? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Miserable. Um, let me think. Which I haven't done a lot of lately. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Now, like, if we're going to go into, like, my deepest, like, my, <laughs> my deepest dreams of doing a cosplay, I've always wanted to do a life-size Godzilla costume. Not life-size. Uh, full, like, just, like, a full, full-on full Godzilla costume. I think that would be awesome. Well, when, when you said earlier that that you wanted to do, like, a, a human-size, like, costume head or whatever, I was like... Dude, imagine doing that for like people in the RPF or whatever. They could buy a mask replica of the mask that they filmed the original movies with or whatever. Mm -hmm. That'd be so sick. Oh, that would be awesome. That would See, be so sick because that's something I'd want somebody to make. So yeah, and I'll just have you do it. There's definitely a guy I follow on Instagram. He's like an older. Uh, um, I yeah. believe he's Japanese. Oh, nice. um, he he recreates these. I feel. Uh, I'm not certain, but I, I believe he uses like a similar um, tactic to the way they, they did the original ones. And they look just spot on. Yeah. No sculpting, none of this crazy stuff. He just uses foam, latex, I think some like sugar to like make it all chunky and some, some stuff like that. And it's yeah, amazing. It's, like, it's like when you go to a Halloween store and buy a little bottle of latex and Get yeah, some toilet paper, make yourself a zombie. They're one hundred percent fabricated and they're yeah. so good. Out they're of, so of, like, good. The simplest stuff. And uh, I love his work and like if I were to make like a original Godzilla like representation, like in like a replica, uh, I would definitely try to replicate it the the old school way. As much as I could, obviously. I don't, I don't know if any of those materials are available. I, I don't really know what they use for the newer ones. I know for the, the old ones, it was like a mixture of like rubber and cement. <laughs> I remember it was like super heavy, super hot. But um, I definitely would want to do something along those lines. I think it would be really, really cool. Um, and then also I want to do like a Batman cosplay and I say cosplay lightly because I, I would it would be like a, a sculpture to some degree like it wouldn't be something quick and cheap and you know I take like a couple weeks to do it would be like I'll take a year to to create the entire suit and that would be amazing and obviously I would 
I would fabricate it to Brandon because he's like six something, and I'm like five something. I'm six years old. <laughs> yeah. But I would. We'll have to wait till I'm in better shape before we <laughs> make me Batman or anything like that. But we'll get there. We'll get there. We're all working on something. Uh, my number one cause. Or my just like my replica suit I've always wanted to do was Vader. But since I'm in the process of doing it, it's not really like a, a dream project. It's just kind of like continuing the, it's like finishing the dream, I guess. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do, but it's also something I've, I've been in the process of working on for the past couple of years, trying to find all the right pieces. And uh, all that's left is just really outsourcing the leather and fabricating it. Um, once I get the automotive paint, um, it'll just be easy to start painting up these boys. Yeah, I've always been interested in like the the monster realm of cosplay, if that makes sense. Like everybody does like superheroes and I'm not like clowning on that. Like obviously that's it's really cool. It's definitely things we're, we'll be doing. <laughs> yeah, like um, but like that's been like the trend. It's like superhero cosplay, Star Wars cosplay, and like I would just want to make a monster cosplay. Just have like a big old like creature suit that I, took me years to sculpt. Dude, imagine that monster plus we just got a full mannequin of a little creature costume. Oh yeah, I definitely Godzilla would be number one. Um, second would be like a dinosaur. Like Raptor's been done before, but um. I think, like, even Adam Savage right now, if you know who he is, he's working on one. So it's not really, like, an original concept, but, like, doing, like, a full-size, like, Godzilla costume, like, that would be sick. That would be really cool. Like, little, like, smog, like, fog that comes out of the mouth and, like, little LEDs that shine so it looks like he's breathing fire. Yeah, because, like, I mean, if those inflatable T-Rex suits were trending, or Velociraptor suits, whatever they were. Yeah, imagine a... Imagine one that's, like, not cheap. <laughs> That would, by hand, well made. That would be amazing. We'll get on it, so. Just give me like ten thousand dollars right? to mold that thing. You're not busy no. or broke, you know. Just do it. <laughs> do it because I want Cute you to. Do it because I said. It's what the people want. It's what the people want. I changed my name to the people. Guys, go to my Patreon and subscribe. Maybe, and then I can afford to make a big project like that. If you guys didn't know, I have a Patreon. I don't like to flaunt it. Uh, because it's like asking for money, but um, you just did. I'm doing it. <laughs> you literally just did. I'm not gonna do it in person to your faces. I'm not gonna ask you guys to sub. To <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. Subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it here where I'm not face to face with you. Just go go to my Patreon. You know. Could you, could you imagine meeting somebody and the first thing they tell you is like, "Hey, are you subscribed to the Patreon?" They're like, who are you? They're like, what tier are you? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not a Patreon supporter. Like, then why am I talking to you? Like, <laughs> they look over to their friend like, did you hear something? And just walk away. There's definitely people like that. But yeah, well, that Patreon thing is just for the sake of continuous, continuously trying to progress in this, in this industry of entertainment that I'm going down. So right now, if you're noticing, I'm repainting all the black because it kind of got a little green over it, which if I don't get it done, um, I'm going to do the, the, the eyes later on um, off screen. It's You're not going to see it. Um, I'm going to be literally like up close, a little airbrushing it. But um, yeah, like um, next time you guys see it, it'll be done. The whole Frankenstein will be done. Um, and I'm going to post it on my social. So if you're following me on Instagram, um, I'm going to be doing the giveaway there. I've been planning this since like the last four weeks, but I just really haven't had time to finish it. And it wasn't really ever planned out. It was just like, oh, I want to do a giveaway, but it was never like, I'm going to give away a Frankenstein and, and it's yeah. going to be the one we did in the, or you did in the live stream. It was just, yeah, a giveaway would be fun. Yeah, so it kind of like worked out this way. So I'm like, yeah, oh, that's cool. Like, I think. Yeah. I think you guys would enjoy this one. Um, you're going to have to subscribe. 
just just letting you know you you have to be subscribed if you want to if you want to that is the least that's the least that's the least you can do for this culture <laughs> and uh, share it with your friends you know i i know you're probably going to share it with like three of three of your own accounts yeah, honestly. <laughs> to like limit the amount of um participants to up the chances of you winning but just share it you know just share it yeah, help chances are they'll hate it and then they helps me out to. help me spread the news of this channel yeah by the way i appreciate everyone that's here tonight i enjoy doing this if i haven't said it already this is fun this is this is like what I'd prefer to do Friday night, and I appreciate that you guys would prefer to be here with me on a Friday night. <laughs> it's a weird year. It's a weird, a weird year. year and a half. But yeah, like, I don't go out and do stuff. Like, I, this is all I do. This is my hobby, and this is my passion. So, I'm going to be doing this every Friday night. If you want to come join, please come join. It's going to be new things every Friday. I can't promise new things every Friday, because I just repetitively... Did Frankenstein. Did Frankenstein, and I'm going to come... promise for future sake. For future sake, you know, be new things. Um, it might just be like a sit-down chat, which might be kind of boring, so I might just be doing something while I'm chatting, but, you know, definitely want to do, like, a cool live stream for the... Once the Godzilla movie comes out, I'm going to be working on Godzilla for the entire live stream. Um, I'll probably make it, like, a five-hour, six-hour long live stream. It'll be, like, a whole day's worth of work. Something I I definitely wanted to do like a a twenty four hour like project and live stream it. The only thing with that is posting it. <laughs> like obviously no one's gonna sit through the whole thing, but I it wouldn't be a post live stream. It would be more of just like a you pop in to see if I'm still alive kind of thing, and I'll just be working the whole day on something. I don't know if I'll be, like, drawing for 24 hours, sculpting for 24 hours. Just doing something. So, like, if you pop in the beginning of it, um, and then you pop in towards the end just to see, you know, what it is I, I was working on. Something like that. Yeah, because um, Robert doesn't have enough sleep schedule problems as it is. Let's just stay up for 24 hours. Exactly. <laughs> I do it for you, for the people. I think the longest I've been awake is 72 hours. And that felt painful. Wasn't that when you were trying to finish your Frankenstein's for Monster Blues? Um, a, I mean, you did the same thing then, where it was like two days or something. I definitely days. have gone like three days with only, you know, a max of eight hours uh, or less. I think it was like, I was getting like two, two to three hours every night. And the most I got, like towards the end, was like four hours. And I remember towards the end, I just didn't feel alive. I felt like a dream. Like, it, like it's it's crazy. Like to to the level of exhaustion you can get, where you feel like you're you're existing in a dream. Sick. I want to feel that again. So we're gonna be doing a. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like. I just want to be doing some more interactive stuff with, with with my videos and with my art. <clears throat> I definitely want to bring some guests on board. I have one in mind that I think would be great but if I do bring him on I don't want it to be some boring ass or not boring ass but just like like a like a like these general live streams you know I want it to be something a little a little bit more different and unique worthwhile yeah. um but that's that's down the line obviously COVID is a huge factor right now and trying to keep the place as minimal to the amount of people in here as possible is my goal but down the line I definitely want to be bring people on board to talk, and I think it would be fun. Yeah, we know enough people between the two of us. <laughs> yeah, to because I have people in the the collecting world. You have people in the the industry, <laughs> or at least people that have similar talents and uh, passions. Mhm. Mm so it'd be fun. Just yeah. other other ideas for the for the future, and like I said, I want to. I want to try my best to help grow this channel. I sound like a channel. a basic bitch YouTuber, this which channel. I'm not. I don't want this to be that. I want this to be about just sharing art, sharing passion, and just enjoying it. Like, that's all I want of, from this. Um, and then, you know, also to get paid from it. Absolutely. <laughs> which isn't really, like... 
for Very training. Important. That's how we survive. Like I do my little jobs and stuff like that, but to be able to like do your art and, and that's it. get paid <laughs> to like just have fun and do whatever you want to do with your art, like that's a dream come true for me. It's like creating your hobby as like definitely you can make your hobby a business, but it's always working for somebody. Yeah. And that's what's that's what's difficult because it it can turn a hobby into you know your job and you know when they say like if if you work I mean if you do what you love you never work a day in your life but it's like sometimes if you do what you love for a living in a in a not very in a very like life draining way um, it does turn into a job and you lose the passion that you really you originally had burning for for it and um, I don't want to lose that. Yeah, like, it's going back to shiny. Ten minutes left. I, I mean, I feel like you guys got a good a good sense of where this guy's going. All I all I need to do left is go through the black. Um, re um, re um, repaint it uh, to give it that nice sharp edge. I might go in with another darker green for like certain areas like inside the ear under the nose like nothing major um and then you know there's the the whole putting in the blood and then glossing up the eyes and all that but like th those are like little tedious things that aren't going to take me much much time to do so um i'm probably going to do that at a later date like i said this video i want it to be short because three hours is no one's going to sit through a whole three hour video which Essentially, I might just keep doing it three hours um, if there's enough to show. But right now, all I got is this guy going, and um, I just I need to get him done at some point. And I still have other stuff to work on, so I can't focus on him this entire night. But this is where he's at now. Um, the next time you see him, it'll be on my social posted actually before i do the 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 giveaway i'm gonna make a promotional video for it which I, I already have it done i'm just looking for the right song and that promotional video is going to be kind of what uh promotes the giveaway for for this frankenstein so once the promotional video is out i completely forgot about this i i, I shouldn't have skimmed over this when the promotional video is out for the frankenstein uh project you'll know immediately to go on my social and look for the the rules and whatever for the giveaway for this guy um so just look out for the promotional video look out on my instagram um within the next two weeks he'll probably be ready for one of you guys to um receive him so um i guess i'm gonna be wrapping up right now so i just want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in for today's live stream. It was kind of a chill live stream, nothing nothing special. I mean, it's always special when you guys are here. But uh, <laughs> well, I do uh, plan to make each live stream a little bit more exciting, a little bit more um, uh, diverse. So uh, just look forward for the future, the future live streams. Next Friday, I'm gonna be here next Friday. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna post about it on Monday. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll just keep moving from there. Um, if you want to be a darling, you can share the link to my channel with some friends, family, whoever you think would be willing to like and subscribe. Share with me, I'm interested. <laughs> um, and just help, help spread the love. Help spread the love. Uh, yeah, so, where are we at? We're at 8.53, we got seven, seven minutes. minutes. You guys can see my face for the next seven minutes, even though you probably don't want That's to. It. That's oh, I thought you. Oh, I shaved off my head. It's disgusting. Your head. I <laughs> shaved off my hair. Yeah, that's all you're gonna see. But um, yeah, this this is where he's at now. You guys want to get like a nice up close look at him? Take him off this stupid thing. Yeah, he, he definitely does need some areas darkened, uh, like down here. It's a little, it's a, needs just a little bit more. Um, Are you going to do a wash over it like you do the other ones? No, not with this one.
But his eyes obviously need to be done. That's The black is just kind of the base to airbrush up over. Um, obviously, I need to go back with the black. And then I'm going to clear the whole thing. Um, you know, the blood really helps. The, adding the silver is just going to really all put it all together. He needs more color in his lips, too. And that's all boring. I know you guys don't want to see all that. So I'll just, you know, once I release the, the promo video for the giveaway, uh, you'll see the entire process from beginning to end. And it's and you're not going to have to sit through this five hours worth of live stream to see the final process. You'll see it in like four minutes. So I'm, I'm excited to post that that uh, promotional video. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's uh, edited. It's filmed and edited by my buddy Alan Lopez. He's amazing. He's the one that did my scavenger video. He's the one that did um, the mimic. And he's working on my Godzilla sculpture video, which is coming up. If you guys didn't know, um, do consider um, e uh, subscribing to my Patreon um, if you do want to help out the channel. Spread the love. Spread the word. Um, you guys won't regret it. I post a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff on there. Uh, I post, you know, ahead of time. So, like, for those people that, you know, see the videos on Saturday, which is usually when I post them, you know, if you're on my Patreon, you'll see them, like, five days before, maybe, like, four days before the, the actual video is posted. So you get, like, behind-the-scenes sneak peeks at all the stuff I'm working on in the future, you, you know. Y'all central. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I promise I'll make it worth it. So consider that uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, follow me on my Instagram. And uh, look forward to all the new content I have coming out. Spread the love. Spread the word. This is my behind-the-scenes guy. If you guys haven't seen him before, he's Brandon. My shop's not done, if you're wondering why it looks like this. I told you it doesn't look clean. <laughs> he's uh, like, no, my place is clean all the time. I'm still putting up insulation. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's a process. It's kind of a mess. We'll get Oh, there. God. I look so pale. That's okay. You look fantastic. <laughs> I look fantastic. Thank you guys for watching this live stream. I think, what time is it? 8.56. Um... It's 8.56, four minutes till the live stream ends, so I'm just going to cut it short. I'm exhausted. Brandon's exhausted, but that's great because we're going to keep doing these until, great, until we drop dead. Half an hour to get home. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah. Let's just, let's just look at each other <laughs> for the next two minutes. <laughs> just look into my eyes. You do know that you're in control of the time. We don't have to do it. <laughs> Two hours. No, we gotta we stay. Can do it for we gotta be consistent. No, we gotta be consistent. Just okay, look. Okay, well, just, it's eight fifty-seven. I'll just keep counting you down. You there. just look into my eyes. Don't blink. <laughs> You're gonna blink. I already know. This is so dumb. Oh well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, like, uh, eventually, I want to do a a video of my shop um, when it's all done. I know a lot of my friends and family keep asking uh, to see what what's 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 my workspace look like. Um, I don't want to show it yet because it's it's really. She isn't ready. <laughs> yeah, she, she's not ready yet. But, um, she isn't ready. Oh, you can see the scavenger in the back. Yeah, but it's a cool little shop. Um, I have everything I need. All the space I have, all the tools I need, which is great. I've slowly invested into every single machinery I'm, I'll need for for this this career choice. So it's great that I have like this whole shop for myself. Uh, but yeah, it's st it's still in the process. Like I still have to install uh, an AC unit slash heater there, right in the middle. Uh, right now I'm using th that little guy, which is amazing, by the way. But once summer comes, I'm definitely going to need an AC. I'm paneling that whole wall with, like, this beautiful uh, wood-stained, uh, like, panel sheets. And it's going to look great. I'm going to have my logo right there. Right right there. I'm going to have a logo. And then that's where I'm going to be doing my intros from now on. Yeah, that, that desk. That whole little station. It's so organized and so clean over here, huh? Yeah, that, that desk's a mess right now. But... Um, yeah, I'll do I'll do a video tour of my my little studio. There's also some stuff back there, but I can't really show cuz the lights right here. But um one minute. 60 yeah. seconds. 
that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Share this video with your friends. And I'll see you guys next Friday. And uh, I don't know about having a video for Saturday. Um, I think the next video you're going to see is probably the promotional video. The scavenger... The scavenger, I mean not the scavenger, um, the raptor project part two is on hold right now. Like I said, I need at least a solid two weeks to really grind away at that sculpture because it is wet clay. So if I can block it out while the clay is still moist, uh, I don't mind leaving it out. Kind of, it'll dry up a little bit, but I can definitely detail it afterwards. But, um... Yeah, that's it. Probably won't get us uh, the Five, making of four. <laughs> <laughs> I probably I probably won't get uh, the making of the Raptor Part Two until a, a month from now. So the next video you'll get is the promo promotional video for um, the Frankenstein, and then live stream every Friday. So thank you guys. That's it, Brandon. Please. You want to hit the end stream so I don't drag my butt across the screen to reach it. Click it and then click it again. No, you got you gotta say bye and then I click it. Bye. And then I click it. See you guys.